so and that's it we have also another amazing panel before coffee break it is a strategic approach to digitalization approach to digitalization of uh, uh, state services who's the moderator so let me see who the moderator is moderator is Maria Sarden had the uh, of Data and Services Competence Center, IGA. The next speaker is Valeria Koch, Deputy Director of the Electronic Services Development Department, Minister of Digital Transformation of Ukraine. <laughs> Roman Matvichuk, Senior Expert of the EU for Digital UA, IGA. The next speaker is Metro Bulika, senior expert to you for Digital UA. And another speaker is Alexey Dorogan, CEO of Beardo. And as always, I would like to inspire everyone to hit the record. So you're more than welcome to ask questions. Enjoy the panel. Can you hear me? Perfect. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear panelists, and thank you for joining us in this discussion about the uh, strategic approach to service development. Oh, it works. I didn't test it before. <laughs> so before we start the discussion and, and uh, in, uh, giving an overview about the results, what uh, what were developed in the EU for Digital UA project regarding that matter, I will briefly talk about um, uh, 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 what are the principles, how to develop a good digital public service, because this is something I get asked a lot. And uh, there is no silver bullet for that, but there are some ingredients or components and principles w which you can mix together as a recipe and, and, you, get, uh, a, and, and you can get a good result. Um, so, when you think about the users, the good digital public service is always user-centric. Uh, it means that we know who are the users and we know what they need and what they want. Uh, we know what kind of problems they have when, I, when they are using the services today. And when we talk to them and not assuming that we know what they want. Uh, uh, during the redesign of services, we can provide them much better, much easy, accessible uh, service, maybe even a proactive or aut automated service without keeping people to run between the offices. Also, good service is data-driven. It means that data is shared, used and reused uh, instead of uh, forcing people to travel from one part of the city to the other with uh, papers in their hands. It means that the data is managed. There are specific rules and policies how to guarantee the data quality. Yesterday, Oleg was talking about uh, this uh, data quality methodology, how to check the registers and how to make sure that data is, 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 um, is uh, in, 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 in good shape, let's say. Uh, services have to be secure. It means that uh, instead of being reactive, you have to be proactive and think when you design the services and develop them, how to make it uh, uh, compatible to security standards. You need to do security tests. You have to make sure that um, there are no back doors uh, because uh, trust, uh, users' trust can be won only once. And if you lose that trust, it, you can never win it back or it takes so much time to get, uh, to get it back. Good service is digital behind the scene because digital is one of the channels. Uh, there can be mobile channels, then can, there can be web applications, there can be me mediators like notaries or snobs. You need to know which channel your users need to turn to the service provider. And you have to provide multiple channels. And as I said already, proactive services are better because instead of making people to apply for things, use the data what you already have and provide the service to them instead of 
instead of um, uh, making them filling in the applications which are which include the obvious data. Uh, of course, when you provide the service, make it easily accessible and understandable. Uh, when you explain the service, uh, focus on the life events or business events, because this is what users understand. Okay. And when we talk about these uh, digital services, uh, what you see or what users see, this is usually the outcome or the tip of the iceberg. Behind the waterline, there are several, several layers of different, um, uh, different uh, uh, approaches or, or points you have to consider. The strategic level, organizational level, that organization is supporting the service provision, and also application level. So there are a lot of things which we don't see when we use the services on a daily basis, but they have to be there. And uh, to do that, you need to have a methodo uh, methodological, systematic and scalable approach to service development. It is very easy to work in silos, to do something in your ministry, but what you actually need to do, you need to share the experience, you need to have common approach, how you develop the services, how you describe them. You need to have a unified channel, let's say like DIA, which combines all the services together, so I know where to go. So you have this kind of approach. And now going to the EU for Digital UA project itself, what are the main results and uh, what the panelists will talk about uh, right uh, after a couple of minutes. The results include uh, founding documents for the uh, State Digital Service Competence Center, which is the knowledge hub. Also the methodology, how to re-engineer or develop the digital services. The platform of knowledge and different tools uh, for testing and developing digital services. Uh, something what is very unique for, uh, to Ukraine is this uh, uh, approach to complex services and complexator, complexator, <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to translate, complexizator, very difficult to translate, but uh, uh, Dmitro will uh, talk about it later and, and it is a really, really cool thing. And of course, uh, when you have all these things together, you have the prerequisites for starting digitalizing all the services, both local and central government level. So this is briefly it. Uh, we can now move to, to, the, to, to the panel discussion. Uh, let's see if everything, everything works. Yes, it works. And I encourage you to ask questions as well, uh, because um, not only during the coffee break you can address the panelists, but you can do it earlier. So when they are on the stage and everyone can hear, the, hear, hear their views and answers. But I would like to start with you, Valeria, because you have very extensive experience in uh, developing services under DIA and you have been there from the beginning. So what is the strategic approach of the Ministry of Digital Transformation to di uh, digital service development? What are the key points which you follow in, in, in every case? Thank you for your question. Good um, morning. Якщо ми говоримо про наш підхід да, до діджиталізації в цілому, то when it gets about digitalization as a whole, the Ministry of Digital Transformation would like to build a powerful state uh, digitally. So we created DIA, and DIA has become uh, a Ukrainian brand. Uh, it's Ukrainian brand DIA is well known not only in this country, but also abroad. And uh, as regards to the approach uh, that you mentioned on your first slide, um, this uh, fully reflects our approach. This is human-centric since we do everything for the Ukrainian citizens to feel at uh, maximum comfort. So, so far, these algorithms, uh, which are effective, uh, uh, they uh, originate from uh, the needs, uh, and uh, also it also allows us to judge how uh, the state uh, offices uh, easily 
can handle this or those proceedings. And uh, um, with time, we'll let ask our citizens how to approach them. So, and uh, today we aim at uh, digital by default services. Now, uh, first we decide how digitally to implement these proceedings. And uh, uh, the next uh, step. Uh, is uh, uh, to focus on uh, different target audiences. Uh, since, for instance, uh, there are uh, some groups uh, um, of people that like uh, attending state authorities, others uh, do not like to walk to the state authorities. So, but our focus is uh, on making everything online so that people even abroad uh, could use these services. So, uh, when it goes about DIA, uh, we normally respond to challenges and needs of the people uh, that, as I say, uh, uh, signal the beginning of uh, some uh, um, breakthroughs. It was with COVID uh, that was a catastrophe. It was with the war where everyone started to travel, having their certificates. Uh, uh, and that includes the EU countries as well. So our plan is to move ahead uh, and uh, to make uh, maximum easier all the processes. And now we can say that uh, um, the major, how to put it uh, bluntly, uh, the major services uh, which are the most popular among the Ukrainian citizens are available online. And uh, we have uh, over 20 million users, and uh, uh, more than 5 million cabinets are opened. Uh, and uh, four of the most uh, popular services, uh, they were digitalized. And now um, we can uh, uh, face uh, fun not only with the digitalization as such, uh, but uh, when it goes about, uh, let's say, scanning uh, some documents which used to be on paper, and now we change them into digital forms. This is one thing. But uh, what about making algorithms and uh, starting with a digital form initially without uh, using paper at all? So the Ministry of Digital Transformations today dwells on how to develop uh, from the very outset digital solutions and to make it uh, a to Z process digitally so that uh, we could uh, make it uh, totally paperless. So uh, we are big dreamers, in fact, since uh, we ask uh, why, uh, uh, why do we need it all? And uh, the most recent case uh, that we had yesterday when we collected the board and uh, we spoke about uh, uh, the military uh, ticket. Uh, this is a sort of certificate uh, that allows uh, not uh, uh, to go and service to the Ukrainian army. Uh, that's something that uh, should be submitted to when you uh, submit a package of documents uh, to your employer. So and uh, when validation of data is conducted and different registries are taken and you check compliance of data in these registries, you go to the tax office, for instance, and uh, uh, you uh, make a query if such documents regarding the military service can be shared, you will see that uh, the tax office has on records uh, uh, military documents. And uh, this is all about integration. And when it goes about deep engineering, so uh, we normally look into a variety of legislative changes. Uh, when it's about some resolution and uh, in a week normally I uh, complete one resolution and uh, it's adopted within one week. But when it goes about laws, uh, not about secondary laws, but about primary laws, uh, the laws will cover, let's say, 10 resolutions. So this is more complicated and we have no fear against it. So and that uh, the majority is aware that uh, the Ministry of Digital Transformation normally take uh, this scenes uh, on their shoulders, which other ministers are unwilling to do. So we uh, do understand uh, the pain of people, and uh, uh, we analyze gradually the needs of the general public. And on social media, you will find some notes saying that there are some deficiencies and some data are missing in DDD or something else is required. So. Let's not speak about the issue of certificate. Let's speak about the certificates uh, uh, for a certain vulnerable groups. So uh, then let's check what authorities will admit uh, what certificates. Let's see that the authorities match uh, uh, with the regulations. But if to go deeper into the register of services, uh, um, then 
you will find uh, around uh, uh, 3,000 uh, administrative services. But the question is, who needs them? Are they needed? Uh, Alexia will not uh, let us uh, lie about licenses. And uh, uh, when it gets about some licenses, uh, let's say uh, there is only one legal entity that will use licenses uh, only once uh, a year, uh, other time it's irrelevant. So we should uh, be very constructive and we need uh, to elicit all these irrelevant uh, fields. So um, speaking about uh, user friendliness, we need first to understand needs of people. And uh, uh, we need to facilitate communication of uh, people with the state. Since uh, um, in uh, uh, many countries, uh, the state is uh, something like a monster. And uh, people uh, make it everything to cut down on communication uh, with the state. And we need. Uh, to do everything for the people uh, to uh, mix uh, with the state authorities so that uh, they could avoid bureaucracy and some routine corruption, etc. So we want to change it so that people in any part of the world, not only in Ukraine, but uh, everywhere in the world, all the such services without facing bureaucracy or some bias on the part of the state authorities. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, since uh, there is always a distance between the state and citizens, and the state normally dictates to the citizens what uh, the citizens should do. So and uh, uh, we will be successful in our human-centric approach since uh, the citizens uh, are accustomed uh, to these changes and uh, the citizens dictate the pace of changes. So before we convince them to go to DIA and to use electronic services, and we uh, call them upon uh, creation of joint infrastructure since uh, this makes uh, their routine easier so but now we go to them and we say uh, let's uh, do dia more user friendly thank you a lot of our countries can learn uh, from you what you are doing and the approach so now let's move to roman um, EU for Digital UA focused a lot on developing methodology for public service design, management and development. So uh, who is the target group and why is it important to have this kind of methodology? Hello everyone, before answering your question, uh, Mrs. Spirit, uh, I would like uh, to facilitate uh, the words of uh, Valeria. As uh, one of the stakeholders to the project, um, I would like uh, to comment on the status of those Ukrainians that stay beyond the bounds of Ukraine. Uh, the state um, actually raised the bar and uh, it was indeed uh, a very high benchmark uh, for the e-services to reach uh, the standards uh, which are envisaged in DIA. So speaking about the question, uh, so probably I will start with saying that uh, we approved uh, some regulations, we uh, developed some basics uh, and uh, uh, determined uh, key target groups so uh, we worked for. So it was essential to understand and study deeper approaches in various countries. So we explored uh, the experience of these countries. Uh, we also involved our colleagues, uh, international experts from EGA, and uh, the different surveys uh, were carried out. Uh, this service uh, became a baseline uh, for the development of the methodological materials so that will be further on used uh, in practice. The initial position was uh, to deploy all of these materials practically and track the best practices uh, and best uh, approaches. And uh, uh, the complex um, innovations which were in use, uh, which uh, uh, were accounted uh, in our methodology, since uh, the connection was indeed uh, accurate. So speaking about the target audience, so uh, we decided uh, on uh, three key groups or three target audiences. Uh, this is CD2. We are called at the strategic level. Uh, the focus is made uh, 
on uh, managing uh, the portfolio of services. So the next component and the next target audience is the level of uh, managers at IT departments. Uh, we are called the operational level. And uh, the major focus was made uh, on implementation of uh, such solutions and uh, implementation of digital services. And uh, speaking about the strategic level and uh, another level is that uh, um, we have to face the level of uh, designers and developers of electronic services where the development and support of electronic services uh, should be well done. And on my part, I would like to say with your understanding of that, that uh, there are some cross-cutting topics and there are some specifics at each of these levels. And uh, our methodology should be oriented at that and the materials that we develop should uh, match uh, the needs of the target groups. Uh, so in respect of topicality, it's indeed amazing that in Ukraine uh, there is a powerful wave of uh, digitalization despite uh, the war aggression in the country. So and, uh, um, more than uh, um, 70 electronic services were introduced in Ukraine. That's very good. And we should uh, depict it and uh, we should fix best practices and we should disseminate the best practices. So uh, this should be reflected in the methodology in different components and stages of engineering. And uh, uh, the best practices uh, should be disseminated widely. Uh, there should be fast onboarding of uh, newcomers. And it's absolutely evident uh, that any public institution faces uh, such a natural disorder as a uh, flow of human resources. Uh, so this means uh, that there should be possibility of quick uh, review materials, uh, raising uh, qualifications, competences, and knowledge. And, uh, well, that uh, courses of excellence, meaning possibility of improving knowledge uh, should arise. And uh, out of uh, uh, the components uh, that we reflected uh, in our materials, uh, as Valeria said, uh, uh, there was in the Registry of Administrative Services uh, that is placed uh, in uh, this list, uh, there were more than 1,200 services, and this number grows so gradually. And uh, when we examined uh, these uh, uh, services, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, made the breakdown of documents by such uh, services, we received uh, an amount of 10,000 services as an outcome. So it's indeed very comfortable uh, to work with uh, such a breakdown of documents. Uh, and we could see uh, that uh, the certificate uh, on uh, PPP uh, has more than uh, 50 uh, entries. So this means that in case of administrative services, uh, filters, uh, specific filters will be applied. And uh, that uh, we can speak about uh, further visions um, separately. And the reference of documents uh, should be developed, and uh, that's something what we work on now on the breakdown uh, for documents uh, in uh, alignment with the e services will be produced. So today uh, we go down to the level of data when we scrutinize uh, the work underway. And uh, we aim at um, uh, analyzing. Uh, uh, then disseminating the knowledge uh, and uh, the analysis of data impacts hugely development and implementation of e-services. Thank you. Moving to Dmitro. So you are the person who knows everything about the complex services. Just before I ask my question, could you please raise your hand who knows what a complex service is? Oh, we have a couple of hands. Amazing. So, Dmitra, could you please explain what, what, what it is? What is a complex service uh, and uh, how the, or why is the Ukrainian approach, approach so unique? Thank you for the question. I will be brief. Uh, when a stakeholder, so that is the state authorities, take decisions on shaping a portfolio of its services, one the approach is uh, to be uh, life oriented. Um, this is about uh, education in some educational institutions, submission of applications uh, for the use of digital resources for self learning. 
then uh, submission of application for scholarship or assistance, and some atomic services uh, uh, where the breakdown of some life events is carried out. So that's about employment or migration. So um, a complex service uh, is uh, the service uh, that uh, should uh, sort uh, provision of services in case of some uh, life occurrences. So our team uh, was involved into the creation of uh, complex services that there is an interpreter that uh, gently uh, was the register of uh, um, civic uh, civilian or civic person uh, will have to submit a declaration or an application and uh, will also to report uh, on uh, their financials and uh, the unique uh, nature of it is uh, uh, the work uh, that we have attained uh, uh, we accomplished uh, a smooth uh, process of e-applications uh, that was far not easy in communication with our partners uh, we faced uh, a huge number of problems and uh, um, there were a lot of uh, disputes uh, around that uh, we uh, sent a questionnaire for filling out uh, then uh, the next is um, uh, well, to make them wait, uh, and that uh, we need uh, to make everything quickly. So uh, there should be one session, uh, smoothness, uh, and that without uh, any relevant waiting, and uh, that um, while registering uh, some interpreter, now we uh, um, invite uh, such people to e cabinet, and then uh, they need uh, to copy and paste some data. No, probably now we are after automatizing everything. So making uh, it all smooth, uh, comprehensive, and common, uh, user friendly for the user. So, and uh, later, probably I will have a possibility to dwell on technical specifications of the platform uh, of electronic services. Uh, and uh, uh, so far, it's over. So, who wants to know more? You can find Mitra during the coffee break or, or the, after the end of the event. And just, we're going to have a small test afterwards. What is a complex service? So, I hope you listen very carefully. No, no, I'm kidding, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Alexi, thank you for your patience. Uh, uh, you are a lawyer. You, are, uh, you have very, ex uh, very experience in legislation drafting. So I will ask from you this um, chicken and egg question. Who should, uh, what should be the first one, uh, legislation or the service? And how to develop legislative framework so that it would not become a barrier for the service development. Ну, починати потрібно, зрозуміло, з бізнес аналізу і it's clear we should start with the business analysis. So it will be easier to say that uh, uh, we need uh, first uh, to do something and it will be easier uh, first to analyze uh, rather than explain later why we did something without analysis. So the law is normally prepare legal acts uh, after the regulations uh, are over. Uh, so the developers uh, are invited and uh, they start their analysis, but it's uh, slightly too late. So and then we need uh, to review everything or invent the wheel. Uh, this means uh, that uh, everything can be even the opposite, uh, where without lawyers, uh, some developers uh, can uh, establish some codes. But uh, uh, later, uh, Europe, for instance, submits uh, this to their lawyers and uh, there will be some mismatch. So in this case, uh, uh, we need uh, to focus on the preparatory stage where jointly we will work of uh, analysis of uh, the current needs, approaches, and legislation all together. So this means uh, that uh, it's better to make uh, known lawyers uh, to one another and the same about developers, so that uh, everyone could introduce themselves on the team and they could mix easily. So uh, this means uh, that in this case, probably we will need to reinvent the wheel in uh, six months uh, after the very beginning. So uh, th this uh, also uh, stresses uh, the possibility uh, after review of the business uh, analytics uh, when the first service and the second service were developed um, 
uh, they uh, will probably uh, suffer some professional burnout. Um, well, uh, business analysts will resemble you the lawyers, and the lawyers will resemble you the business analysts. And uh, uh, we, as a very disciplined uh, team, uh, probably uh, will mix roles. Uh, and uh, uh, in that case, uh, some uh, primary review of roles should be conducted and uh, uh, this means uh, that um, this can be, um, let's say, uh, a relocation of uh, uh, specialists uh, from one room of um, expertise to another room. So this is about uh, migration of professional roles where, for instance, people can change their duties uh, and they can become project managers after being uh, just lawyers or just developers. So and this means uh, that uh, uh, as a very well-disciplined uh, team, uh, all the team gets together on a chat and they discuss the possibilities. Uh, uh, well, uh, and, uh, uh, when you have at least one business analyst or, or one lawyer and someone says this, uh, something is wrong, so um, in uh, uh, true life it's not true. Uh, well, and at that I would like to say that uh, um, it's necessary to translate uh, uh, all the jokes. So. So <laughs> trying to listen until the end. So, so thank you and thank you for emphasizing the importance of business analysis because this is a, one of the key aspects of everything. So moving back to Valeria, um, we have discussed before that uh, how to prioritize what should be digitalized or what sh services should be developed and and it is a very difficult decision, especially during the full-scale war, when you have a lot of issues you need to solve and people cannot access the physical services. So is there a formula or key princi principles which you follow when you decide where to direct the, the energy and funds? Да, дійсно, я вже трохи в попередньому да питання трохи розкривала, як ми пріоритизуємо. Probably uh, I will uh, tell you more about uh, the services which I unveiled uh, in the first uh, commentaries. Uh, so speaking about the Ministry of Digital Transformations, who made an attempt uh, to digitalize and itemize uh, the action plan. So what will be the first priorities uh, followed by the second priorities, etc. Our neighbor and the war in Ukraine uh, made a adjustments to this plan and now uh, we can uh, uh, witness a huge uh, flow of uh, um, some uh, wishful areas of concern we have uh, anti-corruption projects uh, some really groovy projects uh, which are related uh, to reforming certain fields uh, and um, and we should respond uh, to requests uh, of today and um, and that planning uh, is short term and let's say conventionally that will last for weeks uh, since uh, when we were in Estonia when uh, I talked to your colleagues uh, and there was a question raised about plans so it's clear that there is some plan and uh, it's clear uh, the future three months and we were really glad uh, that we uh, decided the priorities and the tasks uh, were set out uh, and the next day there was uh, some story uh, regarding some services that people should receive but uh, that can be some uh, development recovery uh, there is a uh, lot of uh, uh, damaged property due to the aggression of Russia in Ukraine, and we need to help uh, the citizens. So we need uh, uh, to submit applications uh, for uh, recovery of damage. And um, uh, that will be one day plan, and then uh, on the next day you will get a new task, and uh, this plan that you had yesterday needs to be readjusted. And uh, uh, that's how we need uh, to move forward, and our plans uh, will be concentrated on the projects uh, which are related to the social field and support of citizens in such a complicated time. And in parallel, uh, we will also take into consideration availability of resources. We will go to the global projects. Uh, for instance, we have a permit for Spilna project, uh, and uh, we have uh, it uh, jointly with EGA. And uh, uh, for Alexei, uh, uh, this is a big project for several years, uh, and uh, uh, 
for instance, um, the changes uh, probably will not be uh, that uh, quickly brought into life, but uh, this is indeed an amazing project. Uh, there are some uh, projects regarding uh, decustomizing uh, work in the customs um, office and uh, uh, working uh, with uh, the customs duties for cars, for instance, and has taken us two years uh, to bring into life this project. So these are the issues uh, which uh, resemble uh, some services. Uh, so it's not, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, some assistance at some office. Uh, this is about digitalization of some domains uh, where you will have some indirect uh, leverage over it. So uh, without these key changes, we cannot move forward. We cannot go into some global transformations without that. But getting back to your question, in essence, we respond um, to the scenes and challenges which require immediate response, short term, and in parallel, we'll move uh, forward uh, towards more ambitious projects uh, that will take more time, since uh, this will require legislative changes or changes of paradigm. So we work uh, for not uh, as ministries uh, by themselves. Uh, the Ministry of Digital Transformation does not run the services. It's about other services that run the services. So and, uh, uh, first, we need to do business analysis, analyze everything, then uh, get together all the ministries. And uh, um, at times, uh, the concepts um, are misleading, and uh, they are misinterpreted. And uh, it's very hard uh, to perceive them. So and in that case, it's very hard to do a thing. So and, uh, that data should be analyzed. Uh, then you should respond to this request. And then uh, in a week, you should do something. So you need to analyze and uh, work out joint vision. And when all the stakeholders will understand uh, what's to be done, you can move forward with faster pace. And you can approach more technically all this. So that's what we have at the moment. But uh, the hope is uh, to have in the near future to live in a peaceful country and uh, concentrate uh, on on us of this project. Yeah. Uh, Roman, you, before you uh, talked about the methodology, so it's good to have a methodology. It's good to have a policies, documents or in place, uh, some tools what you can use, but. Um, how to support the government agencies and ministries in implementing these methodologies and, and policies? Because this is something many countries are struggling with. They have beautiful documents, beautiful websites with interactive tools, but no one is using them. Thank you very much for your question. So probably I will tell you about one of the solutions uh, that we worked on in implementation of digital UEA. So we uh, asked a question, uh, what about other countries? Uh, what are approaches uh, that uh, other countries uh, will uh, have uh, towards uh, settlement of this issue? So as it was uh, the previous case, uh, we involved uh, the international experts and uh, we conducted uh, a survey to understand how the countries approach uh, this paradigm. So and, uh, in Estonia, for instance, and Finland and some other countries as well, did, uh, we could observe uh, no, uh, well, competence-based approach, uh, that's uh, where the center of competences functions. Mm -hmm. And I wanted uh, to speak more on the center of competences in digital services. So what uh, areas of concern can they cover? What their focus can be? Uh, for the center of competences in Ukraine, primarily following our vision, was uh, to become a hub of knowledge. Uh, that's where we will receive, or you will receive all the required information, all the modern approaches regarding, as Alexis said, um, a uh, breakdown of lawyers and business analysts, but it was a joke saying that uh, there should be clear understanding uh, in differentiation of roles and uh, uh, um, possibility of uh, growing out of these roles as well. So, and uh, uh, when it goes about uh, the pace of developing these uh, new uh, solutions, uh, um, Valeria said that quite often uh, these tasks get mixed because of uh, an avalanche of tasks uh, and uh, the necessity to readjust plans. 
but uh, the program code should be used by the center of competences and should be tracked in terms of the solutions which are implemented all across other projects with this or this uh, state authorities uh, where uh, uh, the best practices uh, should be singled out and the center for competences should uh, keep it on track. And the next position is that uh, we pose the question uh, uh, regarding the methodology and uh, the methodology is available, but uh, the practical skills are required. And we uh, think uh, that it's uh, uh, indeed um, uh, very good uh, to have uh, an instrument of training uh, with such a center when uh, the newcomers uh, or uh, this uh, that uh, occupy some senior positions in the organizational hierarchy or work over the development implementation of such services and support or maintenance of such services. After the training uh, for some time, uh, such possibilities uh, will uh, be available and uh, their knowledge and uh, skills uh, will also rise. Uh, and uh, uh, for those authorities uh, that create some uh, in, electronic public services, uh, the chances of success will also grow. So uh, speaking about uh, uh, my participation to one of the events uh, that was uh, carried out with the uh, CEMIC, uh, that's uh, 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 the European uh, Community Center for Semantic Interoperability, where they uh, also advanced uh, with the issues uh, of uh, uh, the line uh, um, difficulties uh, at that. Uh, so we should look into um, uh, possibilities of establishing effective communities. Uh, that's where uh, the national economies and the state authorities will be engaged uh, where the representation of NGOs uh, will be tuned in so that they will work on topical and acute uh, problems. So um, uh, to wrap up, uh, uh, the Center for Competences um, in Digital Services is an instrument uh, to secure institutional memory of uh, the public authorities. Uh, there are lots of uh, novelties and very good approaches, and we should uh, fix it. Thank you. Um, we had all the time in the world. Now it's somehow running out. But I have two more questions to the panelists, and we have a lot of questions from the audience, so I'm going to choose now. But first, Mitra, you, first, uh, you explained about the complex services, and yesterday Minister Fyodor also mentioned the e-entrepreneur. So we know that the beta testing is uh, ongoing. How, what, how is it going? Can you elaborate a little bit? So I think audience is uh, curious about that. Uh, all in all, for our B2B, we had uh, around 200 participants registered. Out of them, uh, 35 uh, participants uh, uh, passed uh, uh, the entire um, roll out of the services. Uh, this is far not uh, easy. Uh, this is an industrial platform uh, that uh, enables such a registration. And, um, and that I would like to dwell uh, slightly on the composition of a complex service, if you like. So um, Probably I haven't yet uh, shared all the thoughts I had uh, to be able to overcome uh, uh, the pathway um, where we embark on uh, and uh, to test uh, the industrial platform uh, where the industrial enterprises uh, are registered. We need uh, to pass um, innovative and uh, regulative uh, hurdles. So, uh, and we should uh, decide uh, how to. Um, uh, configure the platform where the services will be rendered. And speaking about the state uh, web uh, portal, this is e uh, portal e. Uh, we embedded technological uh, possibilities of such a platform to enable rendering services. Uh, primarily, this is about the possibility to single out the list of services. Uh, uh, and uh, the block of data where the services uh, for each uh, item is available. So and, uh, for each item that is on uh, the block and to save the time, uh, we need also to launch uh, subsequent uh, consistent uh, approach where we will uh, step-by-step approach uh, 
implementation of these uh, services and uh, at that um, uh, consistent um, regime uh, will allow us uh, uh, to integrate the outcomes uh, that uh, we received uh, and uh, also to match uh, what we had in the beginning with what we had in the end. Uh, the next is uh, signing applications. So uh, the users should not waste time. Uh, a complex service uh, should be, uh, well, user friendly. It can be huge. It can uh, be combined out of uh, 20 services and that uh, the platform. Uh, thanks uh, to multiple uh, services uh, uh, will uh, uh, have to spend some time to respond to each uh, service separately. And um, uh, when uh, uh, you launch a complex service at any uh, uh, part of the world, uh, industrial enterprises uh, can uh, uh, follow this uh, path uh, when they get registered and uh, when the user is an owner of uh, the enterprise and the system uh, will uh, then decide itself automatically what data set will be required to enter all the data required for uh, filling out applications. Thank you. So, Alexi, I, I will take a question from the audience for you because it's a bit like intriguing, but I think it's also a question to a lawyer a little bit. So the question is, what is your attitude to services such as correcting information in the register due to an error which is equated to administrative services and is paid by the user even though the error was made by the authorities? So when it goes generally about uh, the current developments, uh, it's worthwhile to make a, a step back. Uh, for what uh, purpose do we have uh, uh, the public services? So we need the public services to protect the rights of citizens and the enterprises. We need to protect the rights of clients that receive the services. Respectively, uh, uh, if uh, before many years ago, um, we are focused uh, hugely on public services and uh, uh, we uh, dedicated much time to protecting the rights of people. It's evident that uh, when people would like to enter some changes into the registries and the documents that they received uh, on their initiative, uh, it's a wishful uh, to protect uh, the rights of such clients uh, at a manner that is far not uh, worse uh, uh, than uh, the manner of uh, uh, the citizens uh, as such. So this means uh, that uh, we should uh, uh, be very cautious about protecting their rights and no one will wake up in the morning and uh, uh, no one will think uh, why not uh, go and uh, uh, order this and that service. So this is slightly ridiculous. Uh, and uh, at that uh, second part to it, uh, that is uh, for not a surprise uh, that we need uh, to protect people, rights of people. Uh, when it goes about accessing the portfolio of services. Uh, the second part of it is uh, that uh, the errors of uh, state authorities uh, will happen. Uh, probably it will not uh, uh, just uh, happen uh, like that, you know, uh, uh, with a flick of a coin. Uh, so, uh, But yet uh, uh, we need uh, uh, to approach the current legislation. Uh, it's uh, pretty much itemized, and uh, I read it several times. So uh, there was something about the state warranties so for the the protection of human rights. And uh, um, speaking about um, uh, the uh, content, it's very interesting. And uh, uh, it's uh, indeed um, uh, quite uh, uh, unusual uh, to speak about uh, the approaches uh, regarding the protection of human rights. And it makes sense uh, to pull together. Uh, not only once, but multiple times. Uh, and when it gets about the e-services, uh, uh, we uh, had, uh, you know, recognized uh, such um, uh, s such uh, recognition uh, from uh, the British clients. So the British clients assessed yesterday this e-services is a great job, and uh, they uh, said that uh, uh, all the information is verified and everything is uh, linked and through these linkages so we can disseminate this data uh, through the excellent results. And I would like to comment slightly to it as well that um, 
uh, e-services uh, are absolutely brilliant uh, um, as an achievement. Uh, when we um, promote uh, new systems, uh, we uh, uh, did everything not relying on the human factor. So, for instance, uh, in these cases where some information is missing, uh, when uh, uh, some uh, fields uh, had to be filled out. Uh, so, and when some information was missing, and in some years so we had uh, to build uh, some services, uh, so some information may be missing. So, uh, at that, some suggestion regarding entering data or um, correction of errors. So, in the way such situations will emerge, uh, we use uh, a method. Uh, and my colleagues in the conference room are aware of this method. Uh, this is a matching of registries. Yuri 3 uh, takes care of uh, this uh, matching exercise. Uh, uh, there is no need uh, in uh, uh, working uh, with people. People can be even not aware of such errors. When we have two registries and when we make verification, uh, matching of these registries, uh, and where there is some missing data, there is some uh, error, then uh, this data will be complemented from one registry to another. And uh, uh, in case of errors, this error so will be corrected. We do not uh, practice uh, uh, working uh, with uh, such data or where they will be missing in some registers. So uh, one register is complementary to another. Much apologies for that. Um, we, we have run out of time, but we have a couple of more minutes to ask one more question for all the panelists. You have one same question, uh, uh, but we, st uh, we have a lot of questions from the audience uh, concerning AI, AI uh, using Trambita well, even more. So I encourage you to approach the panelists uh, during the, the coffee break, which will follow now. And, and, and discuss those questions, also questions about EU integration and, and strategic approach related to that, to service development. But when I started uh, the, the panel, I had a reference to the recipes. So you have to have right ingredients to put all together to get the good or the best public services. So with one word from each panelist, what is the secret ingredient what you as a chef would like to have to put into the mixture to get the best, the perfect result. Я буквально за хвилину дуже круте запитання. На мій погляд, найкрутіший інгредієнт. So, as a manager, the grooviest thing is a team. So, no matter what you say. Uh, there is a very good uh, topic regarding startups, and uh, there is such an issue as uh, why some startups will develop and why uh, they get destroyed. Someone says uh, it's the idea that's a driver or an engine of success. Uh, the answer is uh, the team. The team is an engine. The team will push forward uh, some idea, will develop it. Unless uh, uh, your team is an engine, your idea will not be successful. So it, the success is in people. And uh, at that, uh, um, we should uh, really take it uh, for granted that this uh, story about people and human contribution is extremely important. We need to agitate people and inspire them, motivate them to get tuned in. And uh, we need uh, to create, uh, uh, let's say, a skeleton of uh, uh, key players uh, that will uh, move forward uh, these mountains. Uh, your question is rather deep, it's philosophical, and I guess that everyone will be able to answer in two or three statements. So, so uh, yes, uh, sticking to the agenda, and uh, uh, what is the secret ingredient? That's probably the energy code, uh, that's the DNA of the Ukrainian. We do not want to be slaves. We want uh, to live in the European Ukraine, in the digital Ukraine, and I want to use uh, e-services, and I want my children to enjoy e-services. Thank you, Dmitro. In my uh, view, I would like to say that uh, 
uh, first of all, I need to position myself uh, as uh, a user, and I should ask myself why something happens. So uh, this is a process at times is pending, but at times also we face some solutions. But it's very important to remember why and what we do. Not uh, to repeat my colleagues, uh, I would like uh, uh, to underscore uh, that probably it's about analysis of the current policies. Since uh, this is uh, all about the entire mix uh, uh, that uh, doesn't let us forget that the services exist, uh, just uh, uh, so they should be affordable, accessible, they should be human centric, they should resolve the problems of stakeholders, citizens, and everyone interested in uh, such services. So this is about uh, the comprehensive uh, state policy that will underpin the work uh, aimed at uh, projections, uh, aimed at uh, elevating the level of literacy. And uh, uh, it's very good when the state works in the digital domain. And it's a very bad thing when something is not done. Then we need uh, to get together with policymakers and make such a team for the, the secret ingredients and I hope now you have all this insight information how to move forward with the service development so thank you so much for staying with us and I hope you enjoyed the discussion as much as I did and thank you for the panelists for being here and and sharing your thoughts with us and the results of the project of course thank you so much once again